Hello, and welcome back to Race, Race Chaser. Chaser, a podcast dedicated to the discussion, dissection, and dissemination of every single episode of RuPaul's, RuPaul's Drag, Drag Race, starting from the very beginning. This is over, Connor. My name's Alaska. What is yours? Hello, I'm Willem. I'm the Zoom director host meeting. <laughs> Uh, we want to say a huge thank you right now and a huge round of applause to everyone who has joined us uh, right now for our very first ever live stream edition of Race Chaser. So give yourselves a round of applause. Let oh. the live stream play. Please do we don't you. Do we have sound effects? Yeah, can you not hear that? No, I didn't hear it, but I'm imagining just thunderous, uproarious applause. Oh, I'm pressing them. This is um well, we're can, pressed that we don't hear it. Can the, can the audience hear? I don't know. Ooh, heard that whip. Oh, I heard the whip crack. Me too. I just thought that was you whipping your resplendent hair, Willem. Oh no, that's <laughs> not me. It, I thought it really just made that noise in real life. Mm -mm. Well, this is a uh, okay. Oh, should we should we go over the ground rules first? What, There's uh, no sex in the podcast Zoom live stream room, okay? <laughs> Also, really? mm -mm, no, 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 no. And the champagne, it's actually, um, what's that called? When it's not champagne, sparkling wine. <laughs> not even champagne in the champagne room. It's not champagne, it's, it's deep Prosecco. Yeah, Prosecco, sure. that's it. Now we appreciate everybody listening and watching, not sharing the link. This is for you, you bought it, it's yours. You have the receipt, mind you. And yes. we want you to get your money's worth, honey. And here's the thing, okay, this is happening at a really momentous time in history that that this is happening. And we were discussing um, earlier whether we should postpone or what, but we came to the, uh, the agreement that we were going to go ahead, mostly for the purpose of- Fundraising. We're, 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 yeah, we're raising money. So every one of you who um, who bought a ticket, um, your money is going to benefit Project Q in Los Angeles, which is a grassroots organization that supports supports LGBTQIA plus homeless youth and has been really stepping up during the pandemic to offer hygiene and food packages to people who need them. Um, so you're doing a really good cause yeah, by doing that. Also, uh, since we do a podcast every week, we're gonna continue to do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, if it's Pride Month, um, we're gonna talk about Pride a lot. And that Pride originally started out of riots and protests against police brutality. And that's basically what's happening all over America right now. Yeah. Um, and we support Black Lives Matter and we support the protesters. We do. I mean, there is a literal, there's a demonstration happening just blocks from my house. You can hear probably the helicopters circling overhead. And the last few nights, um, Los Angeles and a bunch of cities around the world have been uh, demonstrating and um, really fighting for a really fucking important cause. And and I, I, I'm glad that we're doing this because I see, I hear, I, I hear that, sirens that's my, right now. Yeah. Alaska and I are only actually about probably six or seven blocks apart from each other. And we're hearing the same sirens. Um, uh, Laganja just said the protest is going through our neighborhood right now peacefully. Um, yeah. I'm glad there's no uh, white devil bitches handing out bricks to people. Right. Like, yeah. Um, I, yeah, exactly. I've been having a, a hard time um, figuring out ways that I could affect change and actually do stuff. But like you buying a ticket and um, giving us your money that we can therefore pass on to other charities is you actually doing stuff too. So even if you feel like you haven't done anything today, you have done something. So try to do a little bit every day and um, do the best that you can. And we will continue to do the same with our podcast yes. and uh, give you a moment to decompress with hopefully some entertainment, um, and it's important to take a moment to recharge as we all continue to run the marathon that is fighting for change and progress. And girls and boys and all the other siblings, we're on the precipice of it. I feel like good stuff will come out of this in the long run. Yes. And uh, we are going to donate money to anti-racist 
black run organizations that are part of the black lives matter movement from these ticket sales as well. Uh, there are many bailout funds around the country for the people who are getting arrested um, uh, out protesting. And once we have all the coins come through from the ticket service, we are going to identify the best place to put those funds and we're going to donate them there. Um, Possibly there might be a bedside table or a dresser to put the coin upon. <laughs> But where, wherever placed, it goes, <laughs> place gingerly upon the dresser. Please leave your um your voucher, and we'll cash you out. This is the thing, okay? And you know, I know. I think my mom is uh, listening, and she's here with us. Um, and I know that this is like, hey Pam. I know this is a it. It's a really scary time. I mean, you see footage of cities you know, on fire and stores broken up and, and burnt out. And it is scary, but the thing is, that's kind of the point. And, and the, the point is not about our comfort right now. And it's not about even our safety right now. It's about a much bigger cause because people's lives are being taken. And, uh, and it's just, it's important to keep that in mind as, as we're, as we're doing this. 100%. Um, also, you can interact in the live stream. The chat on next to the YouTube uh, broadcast is ready and waiting for you. We have it being monitored, uh, so don't get flagrant or wordy. Um, and if you have a question or you want to say something to Alaska or I or, um, or Dig Bipper, um, we will look at the chat and uh, answer some questions each time. All right. So should we like... Should we talk about uh, uh, this important uh, episode of yeah. RuPaul's Drag Race? Just let me warm up. No, 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 uh, Okay, good. Oh my God. Ready? Well, Ready. okay. So the week before, we watched the queens uh, do the reunion, and it alone was alone together. Yes. Uh huh. And we got some good looks. We had some good, uh, uh, some some quips. We had there some, some jokes. We had some skits. Um, RuPaul wore a perplexing blue face mask. Mm -hmm. um, and the Shady Bunch was uh, the opening theme song, which I think was the crowning gem in that episode, if you ask me. Honestly, and I mean the whole the whole episode was just a cock tease, making us so ready to crown. Uh, yes. A new queen, you know, because yeah, I, I'm ready for a new queen. It's been like <laughs> six months. I need a new girl. I, I need a new doll. Six months. Well, however long. I don't yes. Know. Who, who won last time? Evie. Yeah. And so yes, and so coming from many, many, many time zones, the queens of season twelve join us for the finale. And the diva, they start by showing the the divas in full head to toe looks. And I have to applaud all of the divas because everybody looked sickening. Honestly, really some good. of the divas have looked the best they've ever looked yes. in these. I, I'd i like to make a special mention of Aiden Zane in this gorgeous mm -hmm. gown with bronze and black and like, um, yeah. she probably wasn't sitting down in it or doing any dips, that's for sure, but she looked <laughs> great. Um, also, honorable mention, I have to shout out Widow Von Du. I love this Black Widow spider with the fucking arms. Moving arms. Up. I've, uh, it's a deep salute for me today. It's yeah. a deep salute. Um, I, also, I am going to make note of Gigi's uh, hair reveal out of that helmet cone with not even a split end out of place. Uh, that was yeah. math. That was masterful. Yeah, um, it was ma that was magic tricks. I don't even know how she did that. And she is the helmet girl. So she's the helmet girl. She had to um, deliver the helmet. Rockham's uh, Sakura. Rockham Sakura looked gorge. He looked like the a comic bow. book. She looked like a comic book come to life, and it was yeah. um, it was it was amazing. All the girls look really good. Um, they all kind of uh out dragged RuPaul. That's for sure because she looked like the gay Zorro. <laughs> <laughs> you see, okay, I'm gonna defend RuPaul's look for the on this episode though, because it's stone. The last one, I was very, uh, I was very critical of the blue with the with just the the, the sweatshirt. Okay, mm -hmm. I, because it's it 
seemed to not be cohesive and sort of made no no fucking sense but this was at least a look it was a hat yeah. with a mask with a you know a thing it was a full look it gets a salute from me okay her, her- her reunion look for me was just, it wasn't even like casual Kelly Clarkson, American Idol. It was like just Kelly. And it just, it didn't do it for me. This look was a little bit better. The mask was still Slick It Up, which is a gay owned brand. Um, it was? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just, I'm, I, I just don't, um, it's not what I would have picked. I, th- I think like, I love drag, I love color, I love explosions of things. Maybe she's just like letting the girls do their thing and shine and uh, not getting in drag. Now, do you think, maybe this is controversial, but do you think the mask is a red herring? Do you think, it, do you think he was wearing masks to make us talk about Oh, did RuPaul have a facelift? Why is he wearing a mask? What is this about? Do you think it was a distraction from fracking? The um, frack talk? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not really sure if it was protective gear so he wouldn't get any minerals on him or any um, crude oil. <laughs> Very um, crude. I heard it swearing. But, yeah. Um, I, I have stopped trying to decipher the whys of what RuPaul does and I've just tried to learn to separate the art from the artist and enjoy the program and everything yeah. positive that he has to offer. And then when we start, uh, when we hit record, I just start talking shit. So. Okay. Well, fair enough. Well, okay. So the, uh, RuPaul says that there were some, that she set up her own set. In that- <laughs> <laughs> Girl. So there are jokes this episode. I will. Yeah. That is funny. That's wonderful. Uh, also, she says, oh, but the, the team is working from home and then they show a bunch of animals <laughs> on typewriters, <laughs> which I think in my own way, I think that that is a reference to our our commentary that some of the skits are written by by chimpanzees with typewriters. <laughs> I I don't think that's a fair assessment because some of them are probably also written by orangutans. Um, they're they're better with pencils. They don't eat them as much as the as the apes and the primates. Um, I I do I let me just say this: there have been people in and out of that building all month. I mean, I'm not sure how many how many people are working from home, but there's definitely some people not working from home. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm right across the street from it. Um, but nice people there, great people. Um, so the the top of the show, RuPaul basically gives us the rundown. There's going to be three competitive lip syncs, mm-hmm. one where the queens serve face, which is um, just like mug right up in your webcam. Deep mug, yes. Mm-hmm. And then um, another where the two top queens will perform a lip sync side by side for the crown. Um, yes. Uh, so is that normal for a finale? There's usually three lip syncs, aren't there? Well, they usually do a spinning wheel of doom and two, then they make two. two of the lip sync. So it's usually like there's three songs. Um, oh yeah, but- because usually there's four people and they have to narrow it down to two. Now it's yeah. three people, they narrow it down to two. I thought I I really liked this uh, choice to do the the to really take advantage of the we're we're doing this at home. We might as well tailor it to be about being at home rather than trying to simulate like you're in a theater or something. Mm-hmm. They're like, we got to see three amazing queens perform this fucking close w- w- at the same time. You never get to see that at a show. You're, you know, you're far away. We got to really get up in their mugs, see every little detail. And I really, I, I thought, and then we got to see them be creative. So I really like this format. I thought it was uh, really nice. I was not mad at it either. Um, so many girls have been trying to copy Gigi's face and it looks like they got in a fight with some white out. So maybe now people will have a more precise <laughs> view on what to do with those white lines on their face a la Gigi Good. Um because some of Have you adopted messy. the little the it's a it's a it's a white highlight right above the the um, bow of the lip. 
Bitch, you know damn well that? if I got something white and highlight on my lip, it's not a pencil. <laughs> oh my gosh, I've seen it <laughs> first hand, but it's usually that's usually not where it ends up. It's on the it's no, on the lashes. It's definitely not on the first hand. Usually the fourth or the fifth hand. Oh my god, it's on the three hundred one and Duns. Oh, those lashes—they were blasted. I remember that night. Okay, um, <laughs> we do get to see a sliver of Michelle Visage's ass, or uh, her, her husband's ass. ass, which um, which seemed pert, and uh, there was a big crack down the middle. But it looked it looked nice. Um, Ross Matthews is uh, broadcasting live with his puppies, and um, Carson is in Pennsylvania judging, uh, and he does a freeze on the Zoom call, which we have leave meeting. <laughs> oh, don't sorry, Dipper, my bad. Um, Carson says this is just my face. I did a little homemade Botox. Turned out it was poppers. <laughs> Uh, gay, gay thing, gay thing, gay thing. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, well, now this funny. I think Carson's fucking hilarious. Carson's never not funny, and she's a Pennsylvania girl just like me. I really like Carson. Shout out to Carson. Just a uh, couple of Pennsylvania girls. <laughs> you know we're Pennsylvania girls. Mm, PA, PA, Harrisburg. Um. I think that the guest judges this year have been really of note. So they they list yes. them all now. Uh, we have Jeff Goldblum, who was the political challenge. Rachel Bloom, she was the political challenge. Robin uh, kicked it off. We had Nicki Minaj uh, trying to fight Heidi. Uh -huh. uh, Kim Petras, Tandy Newton, Adam Lambert, Daniel yeah. Francais. We had so many great judges. And they and a bunch of them sent in messages just for this uh, finale, which was really cool. Um, uh, uh, it was nice to see Kim Petras on there. Um, Rachel Bloom, uh, pregnant uh, or no pregnancy bazooms just mm -hmm. in full bloom. <laughs> uh, the, now the winner, in case you didn't know, the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race is going to win or or did win uh one year supply of honest Anastasia. That, that's Anastasia Bevelry. Anastasia Bevelry Hills Cosmetics <laughs> and one hundred thousand dollars cash to start their own brand, <laughs> plus a crown and scepter from Fierce Drag Jewels. That's Fierce Drag Jewels. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Whoopi is the girl to kick this all off right now and she's basically saying America needs her queens to show people how to social distance to wash their hands and she's right about that because queens are always washing their hands because we always are digging stuff out of our bras like drink tickets and money's dirty so we got to wash our hands after that and then like mm -hmm. people touch us and the man were touching all up on me. I miss it. I miss it. I the miss man nothing more. Touching all up on. Do you know what I'm quoting? No. RuPaul in the 80s when she is. It's like oh, after in the bodega. A gig and yeah, she's in like the bodega. Shopping at the yeah. She's uh -huh. like, I, I let the man, man touch, touch up on me. Gave me some dollars. Yeah. <laughs> really, that was just Lady Bunny. Why don't <laughs> Why don't we go ahead and take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, great job. I want to see this chat box. I I feel I don't see I see uh, the way it's set up at the moment. I I can't see the the chat box, so I have no idea. Like, what if everyone's typing a last no spinach in your tea? No, you stay on. I can t you can. So for everyone watching, um, we're streaming our Zoom call. Uh, and you get to see behind the scenes here in our break. Are they listening right now? Oh, fuck. They're listening right now. And so you can go, you can look at the YouTube chat box. You just have to make sure you mute it. I muted it. And then you can see they're all, they're going. Oh, I don't know how to get there. The precious chat box. I pulled oh. that are happening in the chat box uh, if you'd like to answer them. Where do I find them? Oh, the lovely chat box. I can't hear box. you. You can't hear me? Now I can. Oh, okay. Uh, this was a question that is off topic, but I think kind of fun. Okay. From Luke. Alaska and Willem, if you could be in Xanadu or Greece, which would you choose and why? And maybe the part. Uh, I think I think you'd be better in Xanadu because you're a roller skater, aren't you? 
Yeah, I would do Xanadu for sure. And I would probably do the Mary Tesla or Jackie Hoffman role, which Ginger or Jinx was going to do until um, it got canceled. <laughs> now, I like... I like the musical Grease, typically. It's a little, I mean, it's a uh, The girl just becomes slutty for a man at the end. I mean, I think is the moral of the story, which is a little like troublesome and problematic, but there there are um, redeeming qualities about Grease. Stalk, anything, I'll watch anything with Ms. Stalker Channing in it. Girl, the only reason Stalker Channing was in that because Lucy Ball, refused to let Lucy Arnaz, her daughter, screen test at Paramount for it because uh, she said her daughter doesn't screen test. So that's why Stalker got it. That is some fucking Ryan Murphy Hollywood shit. T. Thank you for that amazing question. Um, and here is the second one before we go back into our next segment. Okay. In relation to what you were talking about, and Willem, you sort of said an answer off the cuff. Kim West asks if you could give RuPaul's crazy mask look a superhero or villain name, what would you <laughs> name her? Um, gay Zorro. I mean, that's not a... a yeah, I'd say gay, Z- gay Zorro. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say uh, the faggot mortician, but I mean... I would give her the name Lactasia. <laughs> <laughs> Say I'm, your phasers to stun. Uh, I'm fire pussy. <laughs> and Lactasia puts out my fire with her <laughs> with her lovely big tits. Uh, we we literally just watched the superhero episode of um All Stars 1 the other night, so that's deep in my brain. Prepare to uh, pejorative don't. port in in three <laughs> two one we pejorative port we don't do the other port oh some people are some people in the chat box are offering their uh their their uh answers which frankenstein are, i frac- like frankenstein frankenfurter <laughs> franken <laughs> dr frankenfurter D- wait dr frankenfurter guru uh, frack on frack, frack off. off the frack frack, <laughs> frack on frack off <laughs> the RuPaul. Um, what? I see oh, a question in the chat box that we can answer really quick because I want to know too. Lip color. Uh huh. What are you wearing? And they want to know the same question for. Everybody. Oh, cool. Yeah, I love my lip today. It's um drag it lip liner by House Labs lined, Ooh. and then I, I I dabbed a little bit of concealer in the middle, and then put Goldie from my line Suckless Face and Body. And girl, let me get up into this. Do you see this? Oh my gosh. No transfer. So wow. shiny. So oh my beautiful. gosh. It's so it's not a gloss? No, it's um it's a uh a top coat. Is that which from is something your guys leave at my house usually. <laughs> top coat. The top left is top coat. <laughs> is that your line? Yeah, suck less, face and body. Wow, Ding. I really want to get into that. Now, since they were oh. asking me as well, um, mm-hmm. I'm wearing Dusty Rose on Anastasia Beverly Hills. Um, <laughs> that's my like base. And then I use a lighter one. I can't remember the name. I think it's called Stripped um, with it. And then I'm using La Riot uh, by House Ooh, Labs, which I work. I love that. What does it smell like? Does it taste like anything? Because mm. I saw you eat most of it off before we started. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 me. Anastasia. This is House Labs. Gorge. Okay, can we go back into segment two? What yeah, lip do you do have that. on Dipper? Uh, chapped. Oh. <laughs> Honey, it's called Chapped. Chapped. Okay. You know yeah. Michelle Visage doesn't like a chap. <laughs> <laughs> Let's come on right back. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh. Y'all ready for a deep dive on these season 12 finalists? Yes, finalists. I am. <laughs> now the top three, we get a closer look, just a little bit closer. Is that why she's dressed as an eye? Oh, now it makes sense. I mean, yeah. I, I thought it was cool. I thought it was very crystal-esque, actually, to do to just be like the iris of a giant eye. Yeah, it totally made sense for um 
for Crystal, when they didn't change it for the other girls, I was like, okay, that was a choice. But this I feel like <laughs> is is a substitute for the Tic Tac lunch, basically. So it's basically yeah. a chance for all the girls to recap everything funny or everything bad that they did this season with RuPaul, just to keep it fresh in the brain for when they lose or win. <laughs> um, so this little convo with Crystal and RuPaul is, is very enlightening. We talk about someone we haven't heard about named Elle DeBarge. Never heard of that. Yeah, it's... <laughs> the Countess at be... Large, Flotilla DeBarge. <laughs> um, <laughs> Friend of the pod. We love you, Flotilla. Hey, Flo. Uh, my, my favorite <laughs> video is when it's seeing family members looking like other drag queens. Crystal's mom, you could totally tell that apple came from that tree and just got plucked <laughs> right from it. And then her abuela is yeah. so cute so the, the 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 girl's still perky and in the right spot and she's proud uh, of her grandson for his creativity and for his intelligence and she said that she always knew from an early age and stuff yeah very sweet moment so and we get to see crystal building her lip sync set and she's using the science research hammer which mm -hmm. i i love yeah that, i mean it worked on that merkin challenge it did. Crystal Labs. Mm -hmm. um, she, Crystal is asked to give her baby self, her Cody, some advice. Yeah. And um, she says, what makes you different makes you special. And don't try to hide from it. Which I love. Yes. She's DeBarge and she's in charge. <laughs> Crystal Method. <laughs> Uh, um, this was a part of the, the episode that I was a little confused at. Was it, you guys can get in drag if you want. We're going to do this little lip sync to another RuPaul song. I feel like at the end of the tech day, they were like, since you're in a look, do you just want to do a little, little outro? Because having some of them dressed, some of them not dressed. And then like, all of a sudden we have to listen to another Ru song about being blessed when we really don't feel blessed at all right now. <laughs> I think it was probably ladies' choice. And it's, it was probably like, you don't have to be in drag. Um, this isn't a judged portion of the competition, but you can present however you want. That's what I'm going to guess that it was. Oh, sound check drag. Yeah. Oh. But like, I don't know. To me, that's like a category, like in a lot of pageants, they have the category of like, the like out of drag interview. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. French I tips mean, only. <laughs> <laughs> Not an eyebrow in sight, mm -hmm. an ill-fitting suit, and long-ass French tips. That's I wonder the if there will directive. be any drag ponytails. <laughs> That's Nubbin. the look directive. Yeah, for sure. But like, I don't know. I think it's another category that you can, like, I don't know, have fun with. I mean, any chance to be in drag, though, I would want to get in drag, especially if I it's on television. That. Yeah. But Every, every girl is different. Now, Miss Gigi Good is up next for her Tic Tac lunch. Mm -hmm. And she just says, what's up, bitch? To RuPaul. <laughs> and she's one of the few people that can get away with that without getting screamed back at. <laughs> right. Definitely. And she's wearing the RuPaul MTV Spring Break look from 1993, which I didn't, I didn't catch at first, but they did a side by side. And it was very well done. I remembered it because she wore these earrings and something else. And I knew that they were Rue earrings, but I didn't remember the exact outfit yeah. until like looking up, seeing the picture and then going, oh my God, I watched that on TV. Like in 93, I remember my little black and white TV watching RuPaul on spring break and seeing it, you know, like 92 was her like big supermodel year. And then 93, she was doing all the summer shows and the racket and like just gorge. And Gigi looks just as gorge too. Um, Very stunning. They have a discussion about how confident she is and um, that she was just, you know, she was right. Her mama raised her that way to be to be uh, humble, um, but still like proud and confident of of her achievements. I always wonder when people um, do the thing where they say, don't mistake my confidence for cockiness. What is the difference between cockiness and confidence is is it just like one being an asshole about knowing that you're good and the other I think yeah that's I think the only it, difference I think yes because it's possible to be confident in your abilities mm -hmm. without being like oh bitch I'm better than you <laughs> it's like it's like you knowing oh, it, <laughs> uh you can take RuPaul's master class girl I am I'm on episode eight right now Raven's about to do her makeup 
of work for oh RuPaul's God. class. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh, to watch the paints. Ooh. Ooh. Watch it dry. <laughs> I would love to watch Raven do her do her work, but yeah. yeah. I'd love to watch Gigi's mom do her work because um yeah. her message saying that she was so proud of her son in the little pirate outfit was yeah. um was was really wonderful. Sorry, I think the protest is on Hollywood Boulevard right now. All right. Um what would you tell your baby self? What did you tell your baby self? How many times did you have to talk to your baby self on RuPaul's Drag Race? I don't think we did this exercise. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we did it on All Stars, but we didn't do it on season five. I mean, I don't. I, something that Jackie Beat said to me recently, or, you know, not recently, but she said it, but was. <laughs> Um, when you see a picture of someone, you know, and you see them as like a baby picture, it's, it's really like, it's really, that's who, that's who you're dealing with. That's who you're friends with. That's who you're talking to. I mean, we, we are still that, that like vulnerable child inside. And so I don't know. I think this is like a really, it's a really touching exercise to be doing because like underneath it all we really are we really are still that that child um and this was a really this was a really touching uh moment with Gigi um Mm -hmm. and yeah uh the thing that she says about her mom always being by her side and that her dad like eventually coming around is a story with so many drag queens um first time my dad came to the show he didn't even tip um and it it got it got better from there once i installed the venmo on his phone and um you know Gigi's just sharing in this goddamn fantasy that she created um and i love it and um she says to rupaul it's not an option not to win this crown belongs to me okay i didn't know it was proprietary but i'm um (laughs) I'm very, That's very confident. She's very young and she's very confident and she performed extremely well on the show. And she was very prepared from the, from the lip syncs, as, as we'll see, she mm-hmm. was very prepared. So she was, this is how, how she was feeling at the moment. Oh yeah. 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 I, I, I do not knock her for her confidence. Look at how she performed in the season. Like, exactly. Killed it. Can we Let's, talk about Miss Jada? Can we please? Cause this hair yeah oh, this yeah. sherry headley coming to america everything hair yeah. and then the eaten alive ripped apart uh animal print uh one so shoulder uh, everything i was so happy if your hair is bigger than the frame of your camera congratulations <laughs> you won drag race <laughs> automatic oh honey we're gonna need your hair smaller <laughs> to fit the frame how dare you <laughs> yeah now, Jada says that she grew up in a rough neighborhood and it taught her how to fight for what she wanted. And uh, and and then we see a video from her brother, John, encouraging Who's fine. Her. Okay. All and right. her dad Great ain't bad either. That. Yeah. Uh, her dad wishes that uh, Jada's grandma was alive to watch Jada shine on TV because that's where she got a lot of her glamour and early inspirations with her grandma watching her movies and stuff. I had a great aunt with one eye who used to watch me all those musical movies. So I totally get having an older person who recognizes that little uh, bit of lightness in a, in a boy and teaches them about stuff that they should know. Yeah, these are the moves. This is uh, this what, is Elizabeth Taylor name? as, uh, uh-huh. as clear. That is and that is Miss Ann Baxter. Ann, Ann Baxter. And these are the moves. <laughs> hats. Hats, hats of every color. color. Hats, hats of every, of every size. size. Hats, hats, hats. Now, I have, to, I have to say, uh, 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 to me, Jada won interview portion. If this was a page and this was interview portion, Jada won. She she um she was humorous uh and she kept it light but she also had really like touching heart moments and um the the uh, it it was it was really touching i um, she she came she had tears uh they were genuine it was a it was a really um touching interview portion yeah jada had tears she had laughs she had bundles i mean 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know what bundles more you could bundles. bundles. I don't know what more you could ask. She had piercings in her hair, hair rings. Yeah. I, I definitely I mean, also concur that she won interview because I mean, her and Gigi were pretty neck and neck uh, as as of uh, the one woman shows. They both have won four, correct? Um, I think they both won four challenges. They'll probably they both won three challenges. I think. Oh, okay. Right. I think Gigi won a fourth with that one woman show. Oh, maybe. Yeah. But okay. I, I definitely think that, um, but it was very tight going into, yeah, for going sure. Into it. We get a little video from Heidi all about social distancing. Um, <laughs> yes. and it gets all over the place. It feels like a sizzle reel for a, a wow present <laughs> show, but honestly, it one of the, be. the funniest moment in the whole show was she said you there without the arms. <laughs> to a wig head that she was having a fake press conference <laughs> to like Dr. Deborah Burks. And yeah. she, she is just so, um, you can't help but smile when you're around her. Her, her energy is contagious and she's such a positive beacon. She's like the opposite of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's my ride. She's, uh, yeah, she um yeah, she's great. She's very naturally funny. And now we get to go into the close up lip sync, which I I love this. Mm. And it's the new song by RuPaul called Bring Back Bring Back My Girls, Girls, which I actually really like this song. And um each of the girls really turned it. Who stood out for you? Okay, I Gigi stood out for me because they put her in the middle both times. And yeah, and uh, I felt like there was she was doing the most side to side, so I understand why they put her performance in the middle. I saw when Jada went to the side, she wasn't looking at anybody on one side, and then they cut to her close up. So it's like it's one of those things where it's definitely not going to be a fair look at everybody's performance, but I feel like we saw what we saw from everybody. Um, I liked. I like Gigi's syncopation with the eyelashes and how she acted just like RuPaul waiting when she said, where they at? Come on. Yeah. Like all of that was great. Um, Jada, Jada, I think m used the depth and like relief of the camera and moving towards and from it um, yeah. a, um, really well. And Chris, I, I watched this three times because I wanted to watch every girl <laughs> Dude, fully through one. because yeah. it's hard. It, otherwise, you're, you, you're just like, oh, I don't know. And I wanted to be a podcaster. Mm -hmm. um, and we Crystal, appreciate you. Crystal was just fun as fuck, too. Yeah. And uh, it's, I, I did not know who was going to be the top two going into it at all. Well, the first, the first thing I know, well, the first thing I noticed was Jada, the first thing she did was this. <laughs> Oh, show the nail. And I, that, because that is exactly what I would have done. Because when they said they were going to be doing this, I was like, okay, well, it's a handography challenge because when you're up close to the camera, you do that, they call her six moment where you're just, where you're just, tell it to my heart. Uh, ooh, tell, tell me. To only one. One. Is it really love or just yeah, okay. that's it. It's all about hands. And Jada was the first one to put her fucking claws in in the frame. And it and it was great. Yes. Yes. Um, what Check would you have done? And oh. oh Check out this manny. Yeah. Oh, you got the man part right. Um <laughs> what would you have done for this lip sync, do you think? I would have used my hands a lot. I would have put on crazy nails. Mm -hmm. Just like r absurd nails. Now, I wish they would have bounced them around. They did a little bit of like, we're going to give the person, one person, like the whole screen. But then when they came back from that, it would have been nice to see them in a different order. Just because I think Gigi uh, being in the center was like, she got to, she got to play Diana Ross the whole time. And it's like, no, this is the competition between three. Yeah. Uh, three well, three. I mean, they let Jada in the middle once she won, which was nice. But like for both <laughs> lip syncs, it around for both lip syncs to have Gigi in the middle, I thought was a, a choice. And I don't know who made yeah. that choice, but um, it's alphabetical. But is it? Yes. Crystal, Boy name or Gigi girl name? Jada. Oh. <laughs> middle name. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so I don't know. Also, Gigi's camera was was it a, a, a different lens? Because it was it seemed to have a higher like uh, pixel rate or something. I don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know. It's not a you know it's not a camera con competition, but. Oh. These are uh, these are things they they overall did a really great job with this segment and all three of the girls obviously were fucking amazing. Um, there's a as we go to commercial, um, there's a moment of remembrance uh, for Jacqueline Wilson, who passed away right after season 12 um, uh, filmed. And we hear from a bunch of the divas about their relationship with Jacqueline. And this was a really this was a, a sweet and uh, and touching uh, moment. Yeah, Jacqueline was really good at her job. She fucking hated me. She <laughs> she said right to my face, I know what you're doing. And she wouldn't take any of my shit. And she knew that I was faking. And at one point she said, I'm not even going to talk to you because she knew I wasn't playing the game. How a lot of people say that. Do you? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not mad at her at all. She was a great uh producer on the show and the show she helped shape the show for sure. Definitely. Well, and, uh, why don't we take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> great. The precious chat box. <gasps> Feed me. What? Oh my gosh, it's going so fast. Oh, there. Okay. Willem, have you heard about the GGDQ drama? What? Yeah, you, you don't just read them willy nilly. Let me. Uh... <laughs> willy nilly. Don't you call me nilly. <laughs> Is that your name on Craigslist? I pulled one uh, that we can start with from Josh Cicero. What is your favorite song from Chromatica? We were yeah. up in Cicero having a few mm -hmm. laughs, mm -hmm. boozing. Mm -hmm. When I went I out ran to get out some ice, ice. <laughs> <laughs> I come back. There's Charlie. Um, I, my favorite song off Chromatica is um, Ooh, Can't Choose, 911, Babylon, like and Stupid Love. I know you like 911. <laughs> that, that's the, you know, my fa call that's me. That's a walking song, bitch. Call me boring, but I like Alice. I think it starts the album off so strong. Yeah, me too. Um, I really like it. I also like Sign From Above. It it makes me cry. I was immortal. <laughs> That's my part. He's singing my rage. Hey. Girl, she took that down. <laughs> when I was young, I was immortal. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, great What's album. your favorite song, Dipper? I like Babylon. Ooh, yeah, party. That's gossip. Mm -hmm. What you on? Now listen, this Bad is a your life. shit stir here, but doesn't one of the songs sound just like Swish Swish? It's the same sample, yeah. Just making sure. Which yeah. one? The uh, one that uses the Swish Swish sample that uh, Truffle Butter also used. Everybody uses a sample. She, girl, Lady Gaga has never been afraid of referencing, Sing, not uh, referencing, not referencing, putting it in a blender. Yeah, there's a lot of things on the album that sound like other things, but that to me is like kind of the Lady Gaga like sound, like, but but it's put in a blender and then she shits on it and then she throws it up and puts her own like her own like. Uh, her own ness onto it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And as someone who steals liberally from many, many people in many corners of, of entertainment, music, uh, and media. Publishing. Uh, I'm publishing. <laughs> I, uh, I support her. Same. God is a gaga. Tivanya. Uh, <laughs> Tivanya St. James. James Dupree, Bebbington, De Lexington. Deluxington. <laughs> there could be hundred there could be a hundred people in the Zoom chat, but only one host. <laughs> and that's Big Dipper. Big Dipper, any more questions? Yes. Uh well this is a comment, but I think it's an interesting point. Katrina Harding says, I think having to fully produce a lip sync at home by themselves should be a normal challenge because in this day and age it seems to be an important skill to have as a drag queen. Thoughts? Um, sure, we can say by themselves all you want. <laughs> um, we know it takes a village. 
And I want to I want to see the cuticles and the paper cuts from all the girls. Well, I mean, I get what the I I get. Yes, I agree. <laughs> and what an amazing question, because I think it's it's very important. And it's part of doing drag is like taking what you have or at least my tradition of, of drag and like how how I I continue to do it and it's how I started doing it. It's like um, accessibilism where it's like you you're using whatever you have to like to make to make for to put forth what you're trying to put forth on the stage so like i th i thought it was really a chance for them to be so creative and it was really cool and i would love to see like i would love to see that in the future the issue though is that you will if you did it in the future in a non pandemic lockdown scenario, it would automatically become who has the biggest budget, who has the biggest team, who has the, the glossiest studio, these sorts of things. I could see that happening, but also someone like Crystal um, didn't need all that. She went to mm -hmm. Michael's and killed it. Like, and that wasn't a big yeah. set or anything. It's, I, I think, it's one of those things where it's it all depends on the case and we could like beat it like a dead horse but you know someone can come with just simple and win why'd you all look at me when you said dead horse you know why you hate it man. <laughs> you know why <laughs> you know why let's come back in and i think uh uh just a small shift in the outline let's start this next segment with our special guest Oh, cool. Y'all, okay, everyone in the chat box. Y'all ready to freak? A special guest. Very, very special. Very special, so exciting, so lovely that uh, she was able to make time to be here uh, with us. Do you, no. want to go, do you want to announce her? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I am thrilled to announce that Race Chaser has recently relapsed on the Crystal Method. Yeah. Yay. Hello. Ooh. Oh my God. Oh, hello. <laughs> Lilac Long fantasy. I'm feeling my fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Who's the slutty girl from Mama's Family who always had a little off-the-shoulder action? Remember her? <laughs> Very. Oh, she was wonderful. I put on two pinky nails. Look. Oh my oh, gosh. Yeah. Do you have any extra yeah. thumbs? Because my whole hand is thumbs. So I need <laughs> extra ones. Um, real quick, ladies, can we do a tuck check? <laughs> oh, really? Are we doing it? Okay, bitch. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sir, I'm on business. the left, you can sit now. <laughs> Sir, I'm business on the bottom and party <laughs> on the top. <laughs> I want to party with tops. <laughs> wow. I mean, Crystal. I'm... Jesus. I. Uh, First of all. Just... Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congrats. A bronze a, 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 or a silver? A bronze or a silver? A silver medal. A silver a si medal. Oh, it's a silver. silver. I, I, th I saw the medal. It was platinum, actually. <laughs> Just congratulations on such an amazing season and uh, and just a, a great showing of your work and your aesthetic as a, as an artist and a visionary and uh, I, I'm not alone when I say I'm I'm a little bit obsessed with you and I think you're fantastic Stop. and uh <laughs> and thank you for fucking joining us here on Race Chaser. On Race Chaser live the first ever live. Right. Yeah. <laughs> can I can I see a handscape? I want to see all these rings, all these jewelries. <laughs> oh, Ooh, oh. bangles. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. I love it. Girl, oh. I I have to say any any everything you did on the show, you looked at like drag from like the opposite of how a normal person would look at it sometimes. Like even in the lip, even in the lip sync for like cover girl about registering to vote at, at the end when it was, and what you were like, and what? <laughs> just well, like, I, so off. <laughs> I know it was so good. And just like one, one of those things where like you can't plan it. And like, you just have this effervescent that just comes across and everybody loves it. Have you ever met anyone that didn't like you? 
all the time, constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Work. That means you're doing something right. Yeah, that's why. Now, feel. now, okay, the bird lip sync. First, this... what were the other songs that you didn't choose? Oh, we know. Take there on was me. A lot, but I heard I had... there were five. Oh, there was a long list to choose Ooh. from. Oh, really? That's good. Uh, it was like three pages. Were wow. there any Alaska songs? There was like four Alaska songs. <laughs> Only four. Sure. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wow. My vast discography. Um, but I also thought about doing Mindful by K. Michelle. I don't know if you know that one. Okay. Um, and Rumors by Lindsay Lohan. Uh, I'm tired of the rumors. I think, I, think, follows. I think I'm like a bird is, was such a good choice because it it's very visual. And yeah. your, very, your, you know, your take on, on drag is obviously very visual and you could be an actual bird. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're not the first person to regurgitate on RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, I saw that. And Michelle. Mich- oh, you. Michelle seems to have a selective. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> any chance to work vomit into drag is just a, a gift, I think. So um, yeah, it's nice I to see that tradition that. carries on. <laughs> Oh my yeah. actual god. <laughs> uh is there anything that you didn't get to wear on the runway that you're like, ooh, should have worn that, should have done something different that that you're that we're gonna see soon and be like, well, this this is the outfit. Um, I don't think so. At that point, I had used like all the clothes I had. <laughs> <laughs> your bitch, your finale jacket. I was like, ooh, any of these girls gonna do a reveal? And I was like, you know what? If I had Crystal's jacket, I would never take it off, let alone put it on the ground for a reveal. That jacket. That's how I felt. Girl, beaded fringe, stones, polka dots, green ribbons, bitch. Can we talk Everything. about them? They were so fun to twirl. Did you make them? No, um, I. It was my first time working with a designer. Rich. Um, and I ooh, race Mondo. money. She got race money. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mondo, who was on, he did a lot of stuff. Oh, Mondo Gara, yeah. Uh huh. And he had reached out to me. So I was like so excited to work with him. Nice. You looked gorge. And that green I pump. felt like, uh, I felt like my final like form. Assume the position. It like... <laughs> that, it was just like one of those moments where you stole it from RuPaul. Like that was like supposed to be her talking. And you're just like, oh, wait, let me pose like fucking Captain Morgan. Well, I was already standing. It was great. <laughs> It was so wonderful. So Thank what you. was the, what was the, I mean, can you tell us a little, is there anything from like behind the scenes you can tell us about uh, the, the, the finale experience? Because it's such a, it's such mm-hmm. a first time ever thing that happened in, in Drag Race. I'm very curious about it. Yeah, I mean, it was very hard and stressful for sure. Like some of my original plans fell through just because like the things that I was ordering were not, there was like no way they were going to get to me on time. So no. um, then I kind of was just like, I want to make everything that just with like craft supplies I already have at home. I like tried to really mm-hmm. lean into like the fact that we're doing it from home. Yeah. Um, and so that's really how I like came up with most of my concepts. So I wanted to do things that I knew that I wouldn't be able to do like in person, like the pinata. Like I would never be able to like travel with that. So good. <laughs> so no, girl, you get it in your rider. There will be a pinata waiting in every city for you. Sharon had a fucking coffin. <laughs> like you can get tea. a pinata. Yeah. <laughs> like full tea. Yeah. There are so but, many clubs. I mean, Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Well, I mean, just like all the filming and stuff, it was so hard. There was definitely lots of arguments with me and my um, boyfriend slash cameraman slash producer or whatever, all the roles. Yeah. (laughs) Lighting director. (laughs) Yeah. Um, There was a moment where you farted with that pinata. Um, It's just like everything you did stole the show for me, for sure. It was. Thank you. Yeah. I can't say enough nice things about you. Yeah, it, it was, would be really rude to say bad things about you, though, with you here. 
It was right down to the like they showed like the first 10 seconds of the episode online and it, and it was like, oh, she's a giant fucking piñata. Oh wow. Okay. All right. She might fucking win this fucking episode. Where? You know, all the girls literally looked so good and then there was like I felt like I was there also. I was like <laughs> It was no. impactful. <laughs> it was very impactful. I thought it was so funny. Um, I really tried to um, be as stupid as possible throughout the whole experience. Did I you, loved I your mean, your makeup yeah. with the two color eyes, like little details, like all those things. There, you're always just so visually appealing. And What's glitter like your, all over the lashes. All over, bitch. Who's who or what is your biggest inspiration for drag? Um, I mean, I say all the time, it's like I get a lot of it from my mom, as you saw her, you you met her, except kind of just like cranked up a little bit. Um, because she definitely like, when she's dressed, she'll like pick a color or a theme. And it's like everything she owns that has that specific theme that day, she like has it on. Um, I love so that. I just always loved that when I was little, I would like, she's a little woman. So when I was a little boy, I could fit in her clothes. Um, <laughs> and then once I was a teenager, I was like, oh, I can't anymore. Um, so she definitely inspires me. And then I get a lot of inspiration from like cartoons. Um, when I was little, I did like, I went to like a cartoon drawing class over the summers. Mm-hmm. I love that. <laughs> I went to an art cl- or like a drawing class like that one. Yeah, I felt like I was very bad. I felt like everyone in the class was actually like um, artists and I was like kind of just hanging out for the summer, but I learned a lot for sure. Well girl, you paint that face up real good. How <laughs> overall was your uh, was your uh, season 12 experience like being there? Like, how was that? Um, I mean, during filming, I. I felt like I would be more prepared going into the whole situation than like how it actually was because I feel like in my everyday life, I'm really confident and obsessed with myself. And then the second that I got there um, and was surrounded by all these people with all these like gorgeous gowns and beaded things, I was like, and styled wigs. I was like, oh my gosh, why am I here? (laughs) Um, So I definitely got in my head. It's so intimidating. I felt that way in season five. I was like, oh my God, all these girls are like fucking, they're gorgeous. They're like beauty queens. Like what the fuck? Where was your workstation spot? Like I was closest to the mirror on the workroom entrance side. Where were Um, you at? Okay, so when you come in the door, you're right past that picture of Big RuPaul, right? You're looking at it. And then so on the left, that was Nikki Doll. And then it was me. And then Britta was like, we were in the cube together. Oh, cute. You were on my side. Yay. So fun. Good side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and Britta were right next to each other. And we were both very messy. And just like all of our stuff was just kind of piled along the floor together. <laughs> were there any um, Were there any Shanitas during the season? Were, like Shanita hair, Shanita bobby pin. Who was the Shanita <laughs> of season 12? I don't know. I feel like we kind of all were at one point. Um, ooh. Uh, I let Nikki Doll wear one of my necklaces for the ball challenge. Oh. But I think there was one point, like, I had borrowed Jackie's underwear. I borrowed Gigi's shoes once. I wore one of Jan's wigs. You, Gigi's shoes might have been my shoe. <laughs> she borrowed my <laughs> shoes, too. Yeah. Um, are you going to give back Ariel that wig, or uh, is, uh, is that a workroom <laughs> legacy garment? She, left her, she knows she left her purple wig. She still hasn't gotten it back. I always was questionable about that. If you leave a wig for someone on the show, are you expected to give it back after airing? Depending on the fluids in it afterwards. Oh my gosh. That makes a lot of sense. I would (laughs) say, I would, it's hard to say. I literally still have a wig of Ivy Winters. I think if they win the challenge in it, they can keep it. But if not, mm -mm. you need to give it back. Yeah, it's all the shame. (laughs) Yeah, all the shame. <laughs> and if it's go ahead, Dipper. Um, there's video now of uh Crystal and Gigi and Jada watching the show live, and it's really emotional when they find out that Jada wins. Can you talk about that moment? Yes. Me right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, yeah, we um, you know, whenever at first I was told that we were all gonna have to like 
kind of be in a room by ourselves and live react to the episode, I was kind of like annoyed. I was like, I want to go watch it with my boyfriend and get drunk and have fun. Yeah. Um, but I'm so thankful that we were able to watch it together. It like, even though we were all in different areas, it felt like we were together at least so we could like talk and react together. Cause we hadn't seen what each other had filmed. Um, yeah. Oh, y'all don't then, have a group text. I mean, we have a group text that I feel like also we were kind of not wanting to tell each other too much information. Of course, yeah, girl. Um, so I, we would kind of say little hints, but we didn't, we never explained anything. Um, and so it was just so much fun to watch. And yeah, at the very end when Jada was crowned winner, like I just, I could not stop crying. I was like, wow. one, I kind of was like, maybe I'll win. Um, but also like, I was so happy that Jada won. Yeah. And I like, couldn't believe that the show was over. It was like, I think it's just like at the end, we're all just screaming because we don't <laughs> know what else to even say or do. <laughs> yeah. um, but it just felt really special. I'm glad I can like go back and watch that. Well, you're going to go back again for All Stars for sure. They're going to they're gonna come calling. Don't make me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go back. <laughs> Never say no to a chance to be on television or to have sex. Okay, that's good advice. Who said that? Wait, wait, wait. I think that was Tennessee Williams or the other guy, the other gay guy. Oh, well. Um, Truman Capote. <laughs> Him! How did you know? Yeah. You're so smart. <laughs> I learned it from watching you. <laughs> I learned um, from the <laughs> So, okay. What, how are how are things? Are you you're in Springfield right now? Yes, I'm in Springfield, Missouri. I haven't left my house in I don't even know since Months? the beginning. I literally yeah. haven't left. I don't go grocery shopping or anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I go outside for walks sometimes, but I feel like I am going crazy. Um, I am trying to get involved in these digital drag shows now. I was kind of like busy preparing and like I, I felt like I couldn't ever be on the internet because I didn't want to give anything away and like of course. show or record things mm -hmm. um, so now I've been loving watching all the digital drag shows I love like the way that people are able to tell a story in like a, such a different form so I'm gonna really try and get into that I've been so inspired by Meatball who's like constantly cranking out the stupidest stuff so her Titanic did you see that yeah, I watched it last night. <laughs> I literally hate her. Oh my god, I'm so mad. I'm well, so mad at her. I think Cameo is kind of like digital drag shows. They're just like really short ones for yeah. very small audiences. <laughs> yes, for a very, very small, small audience. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, we thank you so much for being on with us uh, here. And we wish you all the best. And I have a feeling really? we haven't seen the last of Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, big friend of the pod. Thank uh, you. Listen. Big. Oh my gosh. <laughs> send us your size. We'll send you the swag. Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Suitcase full of. <laughs> we, we can't hear Dipper. We're just, just not a little. He'll like that. So we're going to go to break. Let's take a break. <laughs> Thank we? you, Crystal Method. Bye. So wait, before Crystal leaves, can... Yeah, she's here. Should she answer a question? Do they have questions for her in the chat box? Let's... Hit me. Is that crazy? No, it's not crazy at all. They just need a moment uh, to be prompted that they can ask her. The so... chat box. Oh, my God. The precious have, chat box. Have you ever been to Poplar Bluff, Missouri? It's the birthplace of designing women, apparently. I have been to Poplar Bluff. Oh my I, god. I don't know why Poplar I, Bluff is the birthplace because it was set in Atlanta and uh, Linda Bloodworth Thompson wasn't from Poplar Bluff, was she? Poplar Bluff <laughs> is where Charlene is from. Oh, okay, Charlene. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I was what? in Boy Scouts, so I've been all over. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, have I scouted. I've been all over, too. Ooh, and Winter's Bone, they filmed it like 20 minutes from where I live. The Jennifer Lawrence movie? Uh-huh. I love Work. a Winter's Bone. <laughs> you love a Summer's Bone. Summer's Bone, <laughs> ball bone. bone. All the bones. There okay. is a question from Randy. That's okay. Crystal, what did you say when you won? 
Randy, good question. Um, okay, so my first choice, um, if I won, I said, just as I thought, America's hooked on crystal. But then they, but then they told me I couldn't say that. So then I said, oh, no. um, it looks like there is a method to my madness. Oh, oh, oh. my God. Word. <laughs> Well, everybody loves an underdog and you will continue to be adored until season 13 comes out. Um, <laughs> and then I'm thinking sex tape maybe with you and Gigi. Ooh, on our OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could even come on me and Alaska's sister site, Only Flans, where we make flan with drag queens. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. We appreciate you so much. And um, thank you for giving us something to watch all these quarantined days <laughs> uh, of course thank you for reviewing me <laughs> we thank you so much did we ever say anything shady that you didn't agree with where you were like i don't think so i don't think i've ever heard people say mean enough things about me alaska so. comes Hold out up. the mouth real hard sometimes so i mean <laughs> you can text me if it's if you know uh, <laughs> okay well, i'll do it right now All i'll right, compile bye. a list <laughs> bye girl bye Amazing. What journalism you're both doing. Oh, thank you so much. What a get. Yeah. Amazing. I'm so glad she was here with us. Yeah, I like her a lot. I asked one of the other girls and uh, they were like, mm, I need to check. I was like, I don't like you. And then I was thinking in my head, I was like, well, we already got uh, Miss Crystal, so we're good. I don't even need to reply to this DM. <laughs> Go ahead. Text Theron. <laughs> um, oh. so come back and do our final segment but i think for see here's a really bts uh look into how we make the podcast i think mm -hmm. for continuity we should cover those uh three at home lip syncs on the outline yeah, yeah. let's do that okay. yeah so here we go all right we are mm. back such a class act we love crystal i'm hooked on crystal uh i i definitely have a problem with it for sure <laughs> Uh, because I can't get enough. Uh, I also can't get enough of her brain. The way she came up with this mommy bird, baby bird thing uh, for yeah. I'm Like a Bird. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, it's just taking the song and breaking it down to what it really is, showing you that you're a bird. So it, just uh, works. it was very simple. It was very touching and it was very uh, effective. I, I thought it I thought it was really, really great. I, I loved her choices. Me too. And I mean, there's there's always some sort of drag that some people like. I, I love it like shock or like disgusting drag with the the regurgitation it's very yeah. like divine or like getting pissed on like we've all done it on stage and like it's yeah. it's one of those things where showing fearlessness and getting people to be surprised by something that they're like oh it's a drag queen you know she's gonna she's gonna shablam oh look she vomited you know it's yeah it's awesome i think and um crystal just delivered she had that like that you didn't know what the fuck you were going to get and you were happy with it and you just lapped it up. And doing those sorts of things is, it, it's something that connects all of us is because like every, every human being has thrown up, every, you know, everybody takes shits, everybody, everybody uh, has sex, everybody, you know, pees. So it's like, it's one of those things that connects all of us. And Girl, she peed all over the stage. Honey, she peed. She peed. Now let's talk about the other two lip syncs. There was um, Gigi Good's performance, which was just, I mean, it was, uh, it, it was fierce. I, I, mean, it was, I, I it was thought art. that, I thought there was going to be a little Aiden Zane, half blonde, half, uh, half black, uh, bus driver wig underneath that curly wig. A wig she, reveal. Yeah, I, I really thought that there was going to be one. I was still happy though, even though there wasn't. Just like seeing her, you know, she made that fabric and like did and the whole said, backdrop. Name something. Name something. Name something. It was it was very slick and very well produced. Um, I didn't, I'd never seen the video, so I didn't know the video was like that, but like Oh that, yeah, that that took some fucking art direction, some planning. Yeah, that was sickening, Gigi. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was masterfully done. It was beautiful, and um, I mean, she's 
you know, she's fucking, she's really good at drag. So it was, it was really great to watch. And speaking of great at drag, Jada, Jada Essence Hall, Essence Hall uh, from her estate uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh huh. She, she chose Get Up by Ciara. And as soon as her eyes opened, I could tell that there was a fan on her because she was wearing the human flowing unit and she she there were there were flyaways going and the wind was whipping and then she whipped off that robe and she had that beaded dance costume under and she started doing the the wind up going forward towards the camera on the carpet. I was scared to death her heel was going to catch the carpet and just take her down, but she did it. I appreciated this from Jada because it was it was no frills. It was just, it was, I'm, I'm leaning into the home quarantine vibe of it. Like she started in the robe on the couch. She used what was just in her home as her set and she leaned into it and she just performed. She just focused all of her energy on just like giving the performance. So like, I appreciated that. I thought it was a good approach and it obviously worked for her. Totally. Um, the are you okay oh i was trying to see if i was frozen in the screen but then i realized i wasn't moving so i was like of course i'm frozen <laughs> you're frozen <laughs> when, when your, your hole's not open <laughs> you only see what paul wants you to see <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you, maybe we could take a little break. Well, okay. Yeah. We no. Have, we uh, we had to jump around a little bit. Jump around. So let's just keep going. Scroll past. Jump the, around. And the crystal interview. Jump, 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 jump. Okay, and then we have Nina West with Dolly Parton. I mean, getting Dolly Parton. What? This. I mean, that this was huge. This was a huge moment. Her hair. Yeah, it was huge. It was. I want that Dolly hair. Girl, Ow. girl, that hair. And did you see her little sparkly glove lit? She had a sparkle glove lit on. She is so stunning. And uh, I really loved that she did this bit with uh, with Miss Nina West. What a cool, it was, what a it cool was really, really cute. Um, Nina had two different looks that she got to wear. And uh, she presented the $10,000 Miss Congeniality check. Yes. Sponsored in part by Pantene. Pro V yes. products to Heidi in closet. Yes. So and we have a new Miss Congeniality. Did you think Heidi was gonna win Congen? Um, I thought either uh Heidi or Crystal was gonna win Miss Congeniality, yeah. And then Crystal was in the final three, so she couldn't win. Are you not allowed to win congeniality if you're in the final? No, because then it would be like then it would be like right. giving away that you didn't win. Because they they crown Gene before oh. someone's out of the final three. So being I in mean, the final it, um, excludes you from being Miss Congeniality. I don't think that's a pageant rule necessarily, is it? Because in like Miss Universe, you could be Miss Congeniality and win. Yeah, but it's a drag race. It's a drag race rule. Oh, okay. Quite they're, frankly. They're, they're exempt from pageants, I see. Yeah, I thought it could have been Jan too because I I thought Jan was uh was everybody's friend. So, you know. Yeah. Um I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of her though either. Because seen the last of Jan. You have a feeling broken, broken Stephanie's child. <laughs> um I think I think Jan had the most drag looks though on this episode though. She had like this Edward Scissorhands look. Uh, she had an Americana look. She had um, another one. She was a boy for a second. She had so many looks. Jan did. She did. She's she's always uh, she's always a great time. We love Jan, deep friend of the pod. Deep friend of the pod. Uh, we get a pop in from last year's winner, Ms. Evie Oddly, uh, who comes who who does this thing where she creates a look out of tube socks, and it was really cool. I I love Evie and her aesthetic and her point of view as an artist. Same, and she painted herself gray too, and like. 
I, I, I love a girl who goes for the, the full detox look, but you, you got to get, you got to get the edges. You got to get the pits. You got to get, I mean, Jan had a little bit of neck showing. Evie had some midriff showing. It just took me away from the, the illusion. The illusion. Oh, the confusion of my illusion. Oh, come on, Kelly Mantle. Um, exactly. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you knew I was quoting. Bitch, I've known <laughs> Kelly Mantle since 2002. <laughs> Don't try it, okay? Oh my God, okay. Well, <laughs> then there's one final lip sync, okay? The three divas split screening it out. They all filmed six feet apart from each other at my studio <laughs> with the silver mylar. <sighs> Survivor by Destiny's Child. Mm, now, they should have got Anthorgy in here to play the violin at the top. <laughs> Girl, exactly. They all had three kind of different approaches here. Crystal yeah. stood and delivered. She mm. she had an amazing look on. I'm still I'm I'm still like curious about looking at this look even closer because there were so many details and different textures and the pink prints. beaded fringe did it for me it was just like it moved it had movement the ribbons had movement having movement on a drag queen is just like having longer nails and just an extension of your performance yeah. your femininity whatever you're trying to give and her having all of those um those things to play with it was just great uh jada had her had her cape and her zippers and her reveal and that cape when she swung it off baby it looked like she did that a million times and not not nary a hitch it was professional it was yeah. perfect um yeah now yes jada started with the thing sort of it was like it was like you know a reveal is coming but you don't know what it is but Gigi did did the you can't even tell that a reveal is coming. Honestly, you could a little bit because the the edging of her costume of the the neck barely like half a centimeter. You could see the brighter blue in the uh, in the okay. in the close of it, and I was like, oh, she got a reveal. See, and I didn't clock. I barely clocked it, but it was honestly, it was my favorite reveal since Brooklyn's reveal coat. Like because it was just so good. The boot reveal was really what what got me. The boot reveal was so good that I think that's where they decided to stop the music and then start it because like I th they did they they went vroom and it went silent and then it picked up into the, after all of the darkness and sadness. Yeah. Um. I I was, was floored. Cool. I was, was floored by her yeah. reveals. It was very unexpected. But then Jada and she made that fabric. Sorry, I saw the I saw the footage, uh, and it, yes, I mean a lot of work went into it. It was roll that beautiful done. fabric footage. But Jada waited until the very last moment of the song to do her reveal with the with the flip up cape and the crown, and I was like, oh fuck! I I literally thought they CGI'd a crown over top of her head. It looked so great in the camera. It was very unexpected because she waited until the last instant of the song she kept us wanting to see more and i thought it was it was just fucking so so cool her flip up reminded me a lot of the lizards and finally mm, the, yes. that Very, that kind of and moment, the, kind it, of it, it it took me there it was high <laughs> drag and um you know sometimes it comes down to that last pose yeah you know whoever stands and delivers it um i in, in trying to figure out who was going to win, I think that I, well, A, it was spoiled for me because my accountant texted me. And uh, he's like, I was team Gigi. And I was like, okay, now I know either Crystal or Jada won. But I still like kept off social media and I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But I had assumed Jada was going to win because, I mean, Gigi and her were neck and neck and they did everything um, they were almost tied score wise, like report card wise, yes. but Jada's storyline with having to fight for it more and talking about knowing the hustle and Gigi being so young and not having had to experience that probably in a way that Jada has, um, yeah. made me, made me, made me totally 100% okay with any of them winning, but made me very okay with Jada winning. Yeah. Because bitch, Minneapolis moment. is cold and they got to do drag there and she's been <laughs> chugging at it for years. Milwaukee. Milwaukee. That too. It's cold there too. Uh -uh. 
Uh, well, Evie digitally passes a crown graphic over to Jada, and we have a new crown a new queen. queen, diamond crown queen. Follow her to her follow her follow palace. Her. <laughs> uh, Jada Essence Hall. Well done, well deserved, and an amazing final three episode, if you ask me. Yeah. Did you see the um the parade of supporters and the family and friends who drove past Jada's home? I did. That was, it was so, so cute. cute. And amazing. Uh, yeah. I mean, she could put on a hat. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Drive driveway numbers. <laughs> Girl, yes. Yeah. So we did it. We did another season. We did, and we thank you so much, everyone who's listening and uh, for joining us. Um, now. Uh, before we end the show, um, uh, we want to take a moment to talk a little bit more about the demonstrations and protests that are happening in, happening in the country and around the world to support Black Lives Matter. Um, this is a really historic time for everyone. And honestly, white silence equals death for Black people. And that might be hard to hear, but it's kind of the point. Okay, so it's important to be educated and vigilant about what's happening in the country right now and to speak up. We also uh, want to recommend watching Bob the Drag Queen and Peppermint's video, which is entitled, Why You Should Say Black Lives Matter. It's on mm. Bob's YouTube page. Um, I'm a supporter of Bob and Monet on Patreon, and they had like this hour talk on um, everything Bob says is is correct and funny. And um, you, it would... Do yourself a favor and watch this. Yes, I watched the Bob and Peppermint video today. Um, and it was it was really amazing of them to I I mean, I I look to them so much as um as leaders in our community and I admire them so fucking much and I'm really grateful. And let's keep in mind that it is not their job. Uh, it's not the job of Bob and Peppermint and other black people to educate white people who don't understand things about racism in this country. And um, I'm personally really grateful that Bob and Peppermint and other people out there have chosen to share their stories and their voices. But ultimately it's up to us uh, white people to call out r the racist systems that are in place in the country, the racist institutions that exist and the violence against black and brown people in this country and around the world. Mm -hmm. We all have that one family member who's talking out their ass on Facebook, correct them, you know, having, Gee. having, um, nice hamburgers and hot dogs over the family picnic is not worth, uh, them treating another person worse than they would treat someone of their own race or whatever. Um, so if you're a person that thinks racism doesn't exist or you don't agree with the Black Lives Matter movement and the brave people protesting police brutality and murder right now, do yourself a favor, listen to Bob um, and listen to those around you who are speaking up and talking about it. This is our problem, our issue, and ours to work on and solve. Yes. And there are so many people and organizations that are already doing the work. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, just the people who are out on the front lines. Mm -hmm. There's um, a fund in Minnesota that uh, my friend Chad from Flip Phone texted me about to post. It's uh, dispersing money where it's needed on the front lines to protesters and legal aid. And uh, we, I have their info in my Instagram. Alaska has their info up. I think it's a yes. Venmo and it's... Uh, listed on our thing it's mn fund hub and they're yes. dispersing funds to the black visions collective reclaim the block mcgeezy minnesota voice juxtaposition arts midway united and um, the minnesota freedom fund has enough money at the moment so they've recommended donating to some of those organizations if you're donating directly and uh, for people who need bailing out in other cities after being arrested or detained by police for protesting uh, there's the, uh, in Los Angeles, there's the Action Bail Fund LA. We're going to put all of these links in the, uh, in the podcast uh, info. Um, in San Francisco, Oakland, there's the Bay Area Anti-Repression Committee Bail Fund. You got the Chicago Bond Fund in Chicago and the Atlanta Solidarity Fund in ATL. Uh-huh. And the Brooklyn Community Bail Fund. And um, you can also find links and resources and other places to donate at blacklivesmatter.com. 
And in the middle of all this, there's still a mm-hmm. global pandemic happen. So wear a mask, bring your hand sanitizer, wash your hands. And next week, we will be back with the start of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars. Five. Girl, no classic. We're straight into the next mm-hmm. season, honey. No, no rest classique. for the wicked. No classic <laughs> this week, honey. No, no classic this week. All Stars is coming. Uh, I'm so excited to see these divas back on the screen. Uh, uh, Girl. And, uh, and we thank you, uh, everyone who tuned into the live stream. Yeah. Most of you are still probably here, too. Let me look at this YouTube box. Should we do another question before we go? The precious chat we'll box. We go to break. Let's end the recording and then we can go over to end the live stream. Oh. Okay. Okay. Leave meeting. No, no, no. no. Just end of the script. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So um, uh, thank you so much for joining us for Race Chaser oh. this week. <laughs> we promise to continue to provide you with award-winning content every week. I'm Willem. And I'm Alaska. And you can rate our podcast and comment about how fantastic it is. And subscribe to make sure you know when each new episode comes out. But you know it's Wednesday and Friday, right? Don't forget to get your tickets. No, I'm not going to say that. Okay. Uh, We have a live stream next week? No. No. Oh, she wants to cut and paste. (laughs) Oh, okay. Now proofread. See, it wouldn't be an authentic live streaming experience if they didn't get to see the Let's actual... try to make our producer feel bad about himself. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, but you can follow the divas at Willem, at the only Alaska 5000, and the Race Chaser podcast is at Race Chaser Pod. And you can use that hashtag Race Chaser when you post so we see you. And you can DM us or send us an email at Race Chaser Podcast at gmail.com. Plus, our bonus content is available at patreon.com slash Willem. We just uploaded a new video that we filmed back in February, and it's us playing the game Guess Rue, which is like, guess who, but with Rue girls. It's so fun. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. So just search using the hashtag Race Chaser. Watch our content a la carte. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe and stay strong. Assume the position. Bye. Great. You did it. You ended the uh, podcast. Now we can look at the chat box. Hot oh, chat. The, the precious <laughs> chat box. Are you a how Sailor Moon la- fan? How lagged is my broadcast? Because I. It's like 20 seconds. I'm still seeing. Is Crystal still on? Oh, you may need to refresh that. YouTube. I'm going to hit. I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh. Oh, there we are. Okay. Yeah. The precious chat box. Give me your hot chats. <laughs> They're going quick. Give me your hot chats. Ru- what? Oh, they want Rue Girl Part 2. Who was... Okay. Yeah, it does fly by, right? Yeah, they're so quick. I can't even like keep my eyes on it. Okay, well, here's one from... Are the dolls looking forward to anything in particular about AS5? Two words, Shea Coule. Um, no. I, drag. Know. I like drag. I no, like drag. Nothing. No. I've been wanting. I. Th- I'm. I'm really excited for this this season all around. I'm. I've been wanting to see Angina on All Stars. Uh, since they started doing all stars and she drove the van in all stars one. And since then we haven't seen her. So uh, very excited for Angina. I want to see Mariah. Mar- Mariah. I, I want to see her be, oh. I want to see her be expertly shady to people without them even knowing it. And yeah. Yeah, I yeah. hope she finds the judging interesting. Uh, I thought it was entertaining. I was entertained. It's going to be, it's going to be a hell of a problem getting these bags out though. <laughs> it's gonna be hell get the bags back out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shea Kulea, I've known for years. Um, I I I was so team her on her original uh season. And then, you know, anus thing is possible on the spinning wheel of doom and desire, a lip sync extravaganza episode. And uh, she was so close. So I, I'm, I'm really excited to see her step back in into the battle dome. 
Uh, I see a question from Mindy that says, what's your favorite look that you've worn on Drag Race? Willem, Willem, why don't you go first? My favorite look that Alaska's worn on Drag Race was... No, that you've worn. I mean, you know all the designers and everything. Oh, that I've worn? Yeah, Um, what's your favorite thing you wore on Drag Race? My favorite thing that I wore was probably... Um, that outfit that I wore in the the Rihanna video. It's like a black lace a black lace outfit, no hair, boots, a skunk tail. The hat, black hat. Take, Take off your hat, off you your balding, hat, you balding bitch hat. I'd, yeah, I'd say that one just because like it was something that no one had expected from me, and like I remember giving it to him on the runway, and Rue just being like, "Oh my god, is that Willem?" Yeah, so I'd say that outfit probably. What about yours? What was your favorite outfit of yours? Um, uh, oh, geez. I mean, oh, goodness. I don't. Maybe something you lost in because there's only like two things you lost on the whole show. You know, I actually like my red for filth, uh, red um, sort of skirt, blazer, red hair. I I borrowed this hair. Well, I stole it from Sharon, but we got the wig from uh, Marsha Mello, who is a, a Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh yeah. legend. Uh, and so I don't know. And that was the first challenge I ever won. And so I don't know. It has a nice sentimental thing. You'll me. always remember your first. Yeah. 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 Great. And there's one more question about new merch. <laughs> Toy Titter. Toy Titter. I don't know if she's the next drag queen. <laughs> I just don't know if she's the next drag queen. <laughs> People want to know about new merch. That was the other question I saw. And I, you know, we don't have the exact thing yet, but I think we're going to do it, right? Give me a Sharpie and a a, a t-shirt. Oh, you know what we've been talking about. We're we're working on some new stuff. um, And so the answer is a vague yes. But I mean, there's been, there's been a lot going on and, um, but we are actively working on, um, on some new merch right now. We have teams of people on Photoshop duties uh, trying to trying to uh, compile it. Once, once they're done editing, uh, once they're done editing at, Ru- at RuPaul and Co., well, they'll be over here doing our photos for us, I'm sure. Uh, okay, great. So uh, I just want to say that we will post the donation receipts from these ticket sales on the Instagram account to show everyone where their money went. And uh, to thank you all for purchasing a ticket and watching this exclusive live stream. Do we say that? No, I just said it. Oh, well, we thank you so much. And thank you. Black Lives Matter. And uh, I'm just, yes, Black Lives Matter. We appreciate you all so much. Thanks for listening, friends of the pod. And you both can hit stop video. Leave stop meeting video. Race chaser. Race chaser.